All right, guys, it's been long overdue, but here's the seagrass report. Now, I'm back at Wabasso. The reason why I picked Wabasso about uh, six months ago, probably like uh, seven months ago, I was out here and seen some of the healthiest and best looking grass that I'd seen in a long time. Visibility was six to seven feet. It was unbelievable. Now, since that time, we haven't had any major hurricanes, no major storms, nothing that should have uh, damaged the seagrass, no large water discharges, least over here in, you know, Sebastian area. But um, I can tell you, the Black Point is pretty much a desert. And here, I can't tell the water visibility, probably two and a half, maybe three feet, so it's half of what it was when I was here in the summertime. And this is actually the first, of, you know, second week, first week of February. And um, it's crazy. This is the time when you should have that really gin clear water out here, and we don't. I think one of the major reasons, and I've been watching this, I've been out here on my paddleboard, I see things that a lot of times you miss on a, uh, on a boat. I see things happening to the seagrass, and I'm trying to put together why. You know, down south, Stewart area, you had the massive discharges from Lake Okeechobee. But you go up to Titusville at the north end, you know, it's like 150 miles to the north, same thing, the grass is dead and has nothing to do with the discharges from Lake Okeechobee. Something else is killing the grass. And uh, it wasn't weather this year. I mean, there's no major weather in this aspect. Down south, yeah, they did have a lot of water discharge from Lake Okeechobee. We didn't have that problem up here. But still, we have problems with our grass. And I think a lot of it has to do with the spring of the herbicides killing the weeds inland. And the canals here in Sebastian, they're spraying the canals in different areas, spraying the roundups and the different, different type of um, weed killers like that. So let me explain a little bit about the weed killers. You know, they're spraying in these canals, trying to keep them clear. And honestly, I don't ever see them that ever in the need to be sprayed at least in this area. Certain areas they do, there's a pretty big problem with the weeds and weed control, but uh, spraying weed killer, I don't see that as a uh, alternative a way to take care of it. There's other ways to do it. Unfortunately, guess what? It's gonna be more expensive doing it the other ways, but I don't see any other way to do it because every day I turn on the uh, TV, I see commercials, you know, anybody that's been exposed to Roundup, using it for a long period of time, call up, you know, if you got cancer, and if you get that kind of cancer, it's nasty, and uh, you know, I don't wish anybody that, but what this stuff does, it kills. And in Indian River Lagoon, and all throughout Florida, I see this problem, especially in Indian River Lagoon. The Indian River Lagoon doesn't flush in and out like many are, like Tampa Bay area and Biscayne Bay areas like that has a big tidal flow. We don't. What goes in this lagoon, it gets washed in. Every time we have a rain, it gets washed into our lagoon, and it stays there. I've talked to a few scientists that have done water studies. There are high concentrations of weed killer in our lagoon. Now, is it affecting the seagrass and the growth? I don't know. I just know back in 2010, that's when I really started to notice after that, the seagrass declining. And what's interesting, 2010 is when the government started to go 100% spraying of uh, weed killers to control weeds rather than harvesting it. Now, what weeds do, and everyone gives weeds a bad name, weeds in these canals, in these water ditches, they filter the contaminants. They take it in, they filter the stuff out. So as water goes over the weeds, they filter it out. So when you spray them, it kills the weeds. They settle to the bottom, turn into muck. All that nutrients that they've taken in gets released back into the water. So and now instead of having a nice sandy bottom, you got muck bottom from the dead weeds. And what happens? Next year, the weeds grow right back. So it's not doing anything. I mean, if you sprayed, it killed the weeds, they were gone and they didn't come back, that's one thing, but you know, they're coming right back. So I really do think, and I'd like to see a lot more science behind what I'm saying, and I think there is, um, to the amount of wheat kills they're spraying. Now, the, at this point in time, the FWC has suspended spraying of wheat killers, and they want to give 
public uh, input into what they think and I wish everyone would give their input but try you know I like to put some science behind what I'm saying and hear the science of what they have to say because there, there's got to be a way to do this where we're not spraying poison into our lagoon and um, right now people talk about um, putting inlets in all up and down the lagoon that's not going to work I mean right now I can take a Sebastian inlet to the flats that you know back in 2010 lush grass flats now there's nothing there and this is just a couple hundred yards from the inlet and uh, second of all putting oysters and clams and restocking those in our lagoon the problem is there's something in our lagoon right now that kills them so you put the oysters down you put the clams down they're, they're dying so they filter the water they're a natural filter and they do a great job of filtering water but when you got things in the water that kills them it, it just it until we take care of the problem, those natural filters aren't going to be able to work. I mean, I've seen oyster beds out here just just destroyed. They, they take in the poisons and to the point where it kills them, then they release all the toxins back into the water. Yeah, well, we got, we got some issues here in the lagoon, and it's not going to take overnight. I don't know if it'll be in my lifetime that I could see the lagoon come back to what it was even 10 years ago. So. Um, but we got to fight, you know. If not for me, for my children and my grandchildren and your grandchildren, you know, it's it's something that we have to do. And guess what? If you want to live in paradise, if you want to live on the water, there's going to be a cost to it. There's other factors, septic tanks, and um, you know, you can talk about the sugar cane discharges down down south. Um, it all is. They are all are pieces to the puzzle. But I think the biggest piece right now is the spring you know of these poisons because they end up in our lagoon most people don't know it you can have a canal five miles inland one good rain what was in five miles gets washed into our lagoon and it stays in our lagoon this is you know what washes in here stays here for a while you know it's not a saltwater estuary you know it's it needs to be protected it needs to be preserved we need to get the grass back once these grass flats come back not only gives place for the fish and stuff to, you know, be a, basically a nursery, it also keeps the sediment down. The grass will hold all the sediment down right now. You know, it's been blowing. This is the first really nice day that I had when winds die, died down. That's why I'm out here. And, you know, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty murky considering this time of year. It should be gin clear water right now. So, guys, if you um, like this video, please, you know, subscribe to my channel. If you go down on one corner, you'll see a video uh, that I did of this area back in um, about, uh, gosh, seven months ago. And the other corner, you can subscribe to my channel. You subscribe to my channel, you can look at all the grass videos that I've done and all the other videos that I do as far as fishing and everything else. So I really do appreciate it. Subscribe to my channel, and uh, let's see if we can clean this river up. Until next time, this is Pete Hink. We'll see you.